Good afternoon, staff. Good afternoon, students. And uh, a thank you to Miss Scat for the St Anthony Liturgy. A liturgy that really did highlight, I suppose, the challenges that we've all faced since the start of 2020. A liturgy that also highlighted the way in which people have responded, responded in very human ways. And as I watched that liturgy, I was really taken by our own college value of simplicity. The term has really given us an understanding of what really matters. What are the things that we hold as being truly important? And it was great to see those human responses to the challenges of 2020. I'm down here with Father John and um, today, the last day of the term, not the year, the last day of the term, we put a line in the sand. We put a line to say that's the end of a term, a term where we face some challenges. And in our own small way here at Kedron, here at Padua, we've responded in very human ways as well. So as you reflect on the term, think about the ways in which you have responded in human kindness. Think about what, is, what really matters, that concept of simplicity, when we tear away all the things that we think are important and we get to the heart of what being human is. And I'm here with Father John, and Father John's got a few words to say as well. Good afternoon to the good men of Padua, uh, to the staff, and uh, any of the friends of Padua that are watching this afternoon. I'm pleased to be here at the Padua Dash. It's, um, we honour one of uh, Padua's uh, greatest old boy athletes, Peter Nowell, who had represented Padua in the Olympic Games. This dash is mo modelled a little bit upon that um, uh, race that they had, th that film some years ago. Uh, I forget what it was. The Chariots of Fire. The Chariots of Fire. <laughs> I can't sing the song. But I'm really pleased to be here and uh, I wish our athletes all the very best and uh, it'll be very competitive. And uh, I don't know quite where to put my money, such as I have, but um, just as long as they all do very well for themselves. All the best. Thank you, Father. And the Padua Dash has, Dash has been a feature of the uh, athletic program at Padua since 2008. And this is the first year that we're running under our new house name, so really special. We're also obviously doing something different. Given the current conditions, we're live streaming. And so not only are we going to the students and staff of Padua were actually going beyond here and were going live to the world. So the first time in which the great Padua Dash is going live. And like Father John, I say best wishes to all of our athletes. I also take the opportunity to say a big thank you to staff, not just for today, but for the, for the year that we've had. And uh, my heartfelt thanks to all of the staff, to the parents and to all of the boys in which, uh, who have responded in uh, very, very positive ways to the, the year that we've had. Best of luck to all the uh, runners, uh, best of luck to all of the new houses, and uh, I wish them all the very, very best. And we have a very, very special commentator today, um, a very special commentator, and I'll let you, I'll, I'll leave the surprise for a moment, okay? But thanks to Father John, and I'll um, go to a video, and the video is like Father John just introduced from Peter Noll, uh, an old boy, 2004 Olympic Games, but uh, his athletic um, start was right here at Padua, and he's going to introduce the Padua Dash. Thanks, everyone. Hi, guys. Peter Noll here. Sorry I can't be at the event today, but we're living in particularly challenging and unprecedented times. But I think we can learn a bit from this today and draw some parallels and transfer some of this across. Hi, guys. Peter Noll here. Sorry I can't be at the event today, but we're living in particularly challenging and unprecedented times. But I think we can learn a bit from this today and draw some parallels and transfer some of this across to the sporting arena. And that's, we have to be adaptable and we have to be unwavering from our ultimate goals. Setbacks will present themselves and we will have to overcome them. Things that I've experienced through my career are overcoming things such as injury. I've miss flights to go to races only to arrive at the meet at the very last minute unprepared. I turned up to do specific sessions at tracks only to find facilities closed. So we have to just work around these things. We find solutions and we don't let them derail us from our ultimate goals. Holding the race this way today is a absolutely wonderful example of this and it shouldn't take away from the spirit and the competitiveness of the day. You've all adapted, you've found solutions, and you've made the event go ahead despite the adversity. And you're all very much still a part of it, as 
with through the live streaming. They say nothing in life worthwhile is easy and there will always be obstacles, but you have to have that presence of mind to understand that it's a long game and see past you know, what's right in front of you now. And if you can do this, then you can really succeed in your uh, future endeavours. And at the moment, this COVID time is just a very large obstacle. On the plus side, it's one for the ages to remember. We will be talking about it for years to come and we're all very much a part of history. To the runners out there today, just absolutely give it your all, leave nothing out there. And to everyone else, it's up to you to generate the atmosphere and make this feel special and actually be special. So be heard from absolutely wherever you are around the school. Best of luck, stay safe. And I hope to see you all again soon. Hey guys. Congratulations on being the first runners to represent Katani in the Padua Dash. How do you feel? Um, I am a little nervous. Do you know why you were selected? Is it because we have a high percent of fast twitch muscle fibers, a rigorous training program, and a balanced diet? No. Is it because we were the first to respond to your email? No. It was your destiny. You're all descendants of one of the first followers of St. Francis, a man with a special gift, Peter Catani. To understand, we'll have to take a trip back in time. The story begins over 800 years ago in a small village on the east coast of Sicily. In this village, there was a young man named Peter who had two great passions, his Christian faith and a thirst for knowledge. Peter had an insatiable appetite for knowledge and was an avid reader who went on to study law at the University of Bologna. One day, Peter travelled to Rieti to spread the good word and that it was here that he encountered Francis. Francis invited Peter to join him to become one of his first companions. Peter accompanied Francis on many journeys. He joined Francis on his pilgrimage to the Holy Land and then, in 1219, was with Francis at Damietta when Francis visited Sultan Malik al Kamal. When Francis resigned as head of the order in 1220, he appointed Peter as his successor. At Padua, we adopt the motto, Knowledge in Service, and the Latin Cross as a symbol of our patron, Peter Catani. Today, you run in the footsteps of greatness. Each possess the same gift. How do you feel about running for Katani House now? Do we get to keep the singlets? Yes. <laughs> Katani Crusaders, in service to the college. Dash 20, Dash 20, it's Dello, it's Dello. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, that's Nicholas Chef. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Hey guys, what are we playing? New Dash 2020 game. Dash 2020 game, how's it work? You can choose your own runners. And you use skill points to adjust your attributes. You'll love it. Okay, I'm in. Fire it up. Uh, someone's been sitting in my bin bag. Alright, so we got 15 points. So I got 5, you got 5, and yeah, Nico, you got 5 as well. So, uh, since you got the control, you can go first, though. Too easy. Alright, I'm just going to crank up the aerobic capacity, because, you know, it is an endurance event, after all. Alright, your turn. Jeez. 5 points. What's cadence? Cadence is uh, how fast your legs turn over, so it's got to be about speed. So you reckon we need that? Yeah, put them up. My go. 
Or you? Uh, what's level nine mean? When you increase the attributes, you get higher levels. All right, cool. So how many runners do we need? I think we need eight runners. Toughness? We could use some toughness. How about we put a couple of points in that and see what character we can build? Wow, level 11. So, what do you reckon happens if I just cranked it up to 10? Give it a go. Stop playing with the remote. Oh. Oh my god, you need to dial that down, Nico. You know what I think I'm doing? I think we should. Nico, where'd you get that remote from? Mm. Just had it in my pocket. I think we should boost up tactics and agility and see what level we get. Here, give it here. I'm going to show you a few of the other levels that I've already made. Fletch, show us the level 7 run. Yeah, here we go, here we go. What the hell's going on? Someone's playing with the look of the characters. Nico, where'd you get that remote control from? Found it. <laughs> That's it. That's our team. That's a good team. No way we don't win this. What is going on here? You're supposed to be doing your math, boy! Oh, we're talking about our FTV assignment. Yeah, we're gonna go back in time, sir. Oh, so, what, are you gonna build a DeLorean and drive back into the future, huh? You Marty McFly or something? Oh, where are we? I think we're in the 8th century. Wait, where's Cully? Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Where are we? Hey, hey look at that! Rieti! One of my favourite spots to go to. Do you know that Angelo was born there? No. No? I don't know that. Oh, well that's where Angelo Tancredi comes from. And the Rieti Township has the sun as the crest. How's oh. that? They have that on their crest, the sun. So that's why Angela has a son on their crest. God, that'd be exactly why Father John did that. He's oh. amazing, isn't he? Where to now, Will? What's that? Oh. Ah! <laughs> Who was that for? Man, that was Angelo. Angelo's our patron. He used to be a knight. A knight of noble wealth. A formidable warrior. Oh, well, that's like St. Francis. He gave up a big sacrifice to be a follower of St. Francis. A massive sacrifice. He was really, really wealthy and of a noble, noble family. So he would have had lots of fine clothes and great food. But he gave that all up, just like Francis did. That's why Angelo was one of the closest, earliest followers of St. Francis. Okay? And he's a massive sacrifice, and that's why he was very close. That's why Angelo is number one. Oh, where to now, Will? Oh. oh, look, it's Francis and Angelo preaching to the poor. I tell you what, as a former knight, this is a pretty brave act from him, isn't it? To go out there and preach to the poor, preach the good word to the masses. He must have been a man of great faith. Really, really good faith, I think, Will. Angelo was a very, very strong character who followed in Francis' footsteps and preached just like him. That's our patron, Andrew. Hey boys, are you aware of the stigmata? Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah, okay. Let's go and have a look at that, Will. Here we are, boys. This is a, an example of the stigmata. And the stigmata was the wounds that St. Francis actually received, just like Christ received when he was uh, crucified on the cross. And now, Angelo was one of the only friars, one of the one of few, that actually was there to witness this event, this holy, holy event. So he was pretty close to Francis. He was a great friend of Francis. 
and he was, like Mr. Carl said, one of the only few to witness the stigmata. A very, 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 very good close friend. And a he, mate, as we would say. A very good mate that we would call in Australia. But he was also there in his final few years where he cared and he prayed with Francis in his, in his last few years. Francis was very ill in his last few years. Angelo was always there by his side, praying with him and caring for him. So that's where our motto comes from, prayer and care. That would be right. That's where our motto comes from, prayer and care. So, as I was mentioning, Francis and Angelo were very, very close and they were actually united. Uh, and they were united in the fact that uh, when, when Francis died, Angelo had such great honour with Francis that he was actually buried in the same basilica. So, Will, let's go to that basilica. Let's go. Oh, would this oh. be the... Basilica of St. Francis of yes. Assisi. Yeah, the Basilica of St. Francis of Assisi. This is believed where Francis and Angelo are buried now. Um, and it shows great honour and how, how close Angelo is to St. Francis. To be a house, you all need to be united as one. To have honour for your crest and show great mateship. As a house, we can show great bravery, especially in our college and day-to-day -day lives. If we go up there and show the great faith and teachings of St. Francis, we will all be united as one. Right, as we mentioned, Angelo is a very, very proud house. We're very close to Francis, we're united, we show bravery, sacrifice, our prayer and care. Our son's our mo is in our crest, which shows us strength and power. So Angelo is one house, we're united as one. We've seen a little bit of history today of, of Angelo, as much as we could find, he's a great, ex-knight who was a warrior and now he's a, and now a noble man who's now following Francis's Mate! 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 Coming in at year five, Lucas Humphreys, absolute monster standing at seven feet tall and has the speed of Angelo riding on the back of a horse. From year six, we have Thomas White, the reigning dash champion. Don't let his size fool you, he runs like a cheetah. Coming in at year seven, Damon Humphreys, known to be very fast, quicker than his dad, failing to break the record for grade seven dash. In year eight, we have Isaac Boll, the rugby prodigy, Back again from injury, he is vowing to dominate the course, bringing the spirit of Angelo with him as he runs. Coming in at year nine, it's Tristan French, known to be the better French, and he's got the speed to win it all. In year 10, we have the Australian triathlete champion, Jack Green. He's already taken on half the world, the Padua Dash should be no problem. Coming in at year 11, the mighty Jacob Bain. He's known to have a better stride than the one and only Will Barker. In year 12, we have the one, the only, in his final year of the Padua Dash, the almighty Riley Murray, ready to dominate the course one last time. Hi, I'm Will, and this is my brother Tom, and we're the Leo House Captains for 2020. With the guidance of Mr O'Shea, and with the help of our college captain, Joe Downs, our college vice captain, Ari Leach, and our co-curricular leader, Declan Baker. We're striving to get our new house off to a great start. Our house patron, Brother Leo, inspires us to show compassion and friendship to all. As our motto says, companions together. Brother Leo was born in Assisi and joined the head of the Franciscan friars, St. Francis, after he traveled to Rome in 1209. He was secretary to Francis on many of his preaching journeys. Leo was at Francis's side during sickness and in health. 
He was always very close to Francis, and he was considered one of his closest friends. This is our house emblem. Our motto, Companions Together, means like Brother Leo, we must be companions to all those in our community, friends to all, especially showing sincerity and an understanding to those who are lonely in our world. The colour purple highlights Brother Leo's nobility, and we must show the same nobility and respect to all. Purple shows that we, as Leo men, are creative, smart and ambitious in everything that we do and say. The lion highlights the strength and courage within each Leo man, and that we can let it shine when we need it, especially on our sporting fields. Leo has a very tight-knit, old boy community, which consistently keeps in touch with us here at school. There are some very familiar faces seen at house events, like our annual house Eucharist. The community and friendship within Leo House is unmatched and unwavering, which makes Leo House the best house. Sir, I think we have a team. Firstly, our rookie, our year five runner, Kalen Breen, younger brother of Elijah. He's got something special about him, sir. His keen interest in rugby and AFL make him a fast and great team member. Harry Lushwood, sir. His form is untouchable in the age group of year six. This is his second time running for Leo, sir. His skills that he learned from tennis and soccer make him an important team player and a big part of our selected team. Our grade seven runner, Elijah Breen. This is his second time running for the dash. His speed and toughness is unforeseen of someone of his age. Sir, we need him. Our grade eight runner is a veteran on this track, Darby Breeden. He's a natural born athlete, sir. He is too essential not to be included in our team. No exceptions on this one, sir. We need Hudson Poole, our year nine runner, to be the middleman in all of this. His keen stride is impeccable, and he's unstoppable once he's on the track. Next on our list was an easy pick, Ollie Frost, our grade 10 specialist. He's run this track four times, and his flexibility and agility make him a superb asset, and an essential part of this mission. Our second in command, Sam DeWard. He has flexibility and communication to add to our team. The seven years of experience that he has on the track makes him the perfect intel on this mission. Finally, our squadron leader, Jack Mitchell. He's got five years of experience, sir. One of the fastest men alive. Two minute 50 Ks, quickest I've ever seen. His speed and agility is unmatched. The perfect leader of this cunning team. Boys, I think we've got our team. Hey, sir. Um, just look at the pen. Hi there, I'm here with Father Joe, Campus Minister at Padua College, to ask him a few questions about Messiah. First off, who was Messiah and how is he related to St. Francis of Assisi? Well, we think Messiah was a fighting man. He was a mercenary from Tuscany and he fought for the city of Perugia. Now, earlier on, uh, St. Francis fought against Perugia. So maybe Francis met Maceo when he was uh, imprisoned in Perugia. But all we know is that Maceo joined the friars very early on. As we know, Father, our motto is courtesy is next to godliness. How did Maceo display these actions? Well, there's a book about the life of St. Francis called The Little Flowers of St. Francis. And in that, Maceo is the gatekeeper for uh, the friary where St. Francis is staying. And St. Francis is off praying, and a person comes to the door and bangs on the door, and one of the friars answers the door, and he sort of sends this guy away. Well, this guy was, was very impatient, so he came back and he banged on the door again, he waited for a little while, and banged on the door again. So Massio came out and said, mate, the way you knock on the door is knock three times, say the Our Father, and have the patience to wait. 
So he's associated with courtesy because he taught his person uh, how to knock on the door and to be courteous, to have a bit of patience and to, to wait for the friars to open the door. Okay, here we go. Focus, speed, I am speed. One winner, five losers. I eat losers for breakfast. Breakfast. Wait, maybe I should have had breakfast. A little brekkie could be good for me. No, 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 stay focused. Speed. Fast than fast, quicker than quick. I am lightning. Hey Jonesy, are you ready? Oh yeah, lightning's ready. Ciao. We're at Queen Savale House, the party house, and by far the best house. Our house guardian is Mr. Levy, and we're the house leaders, Josh Tui and Alex Goodwin. Our house is named after Bernard of Queen Savale, St. Francis's right hand man. Bernard was originally an academic, studying law, fought and crossed the path of St. Francis, and became a man of faith. Bernard and Francis decided that if they were both to become men of faith, they needed a cause. So, they went to the local church and opened the Bible to a random scripture and read the following passage. Take nothing for your journey. Don't take a walking stick, a traveller's bag, food, money, or even a change of clothes. This is where our motto comes from. Francis sent Bernard on an important missions, like when Francis chose Bernard to lead the first group of friars to Rome, to ask for the approval of the Pope to Francis's newfound order. He is now buried very close to St. Francis in the Basilica of St. Francis. Our spirit is unmatched by any other house and everyone gives something a go. These are some of the finest young men at college and we are diverse, musicians, athletes and academics alike. We are loud and we are proud to be Queen Ballet House. From year five, he's new to the college, but this kid has some serious wheels. Give it up for James, sir. From year six, he's gonna run out of this world and back again, Ryan, out. Someone call the fire department because Preston Patterson from year seven is gonna be lighting this track on fire. He's the only man in Usain Bolt's afraid to race. Baxter Fielder from year eight. From year nine, this young man will be at the finish line before Nico starts talking about a second runner. Give it up for Will Rune. He's one with the speed force. Some say he was the inspiration for the Flash. Give it up for Sam Dickey from year 10. Biagio, more like being and gone after he's finished with the other houses. Biagio Gugiacelli from year 11. And from year 12, he's the Quintavale man that's gonna carry us home. Give it up for Will Frenzy. Oi Bailey, who are we going for today? Rafina. And why's that? Because of the best house. So, RJ, who are we supporting today? Uh, Rafina. And why's that? Because they're the best. Hey, sir, who are we supporting today? Uh, Rafina, mate. Oh, yeah, why's that? Best bunch of blokes I've seen in a while. Who are we 
you supporting today? Of course, Rafino. And why is that? Because they're awesome and they're going to win. Hey, Mez, what are we going for today? Rafino House, of course. And why is that? One word, Baz. Yeah. So, Lockie, who are we supporting today? Ah, uh, Rafino. Uh, why is that? Ah, uh, because they're going to win. Rafino. 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 In a time where the gap between the rich and the poor was growing, St. Francis created an order in an attempt to alleviate the pain brought by this divide. Brother Rafino was noble by birth and thrive by choice. Brother Rafino was one of the first members of the order, and because of this, he became very close to St. Francis. He was lucky enough to be blessed with witnessing many of the paramount events in St. Francis' life. He accompanied St. Francis to Mount Laverna, where he received the stigmata. He was also one of the four brothers that aided St. Francis during his final days. Brother Rafino was said by St. Francis to be one of the holiest men of Assisi, whilst also being amongst the most noble and most gentle. Brother Rafino was not known for his preaching, rather his ultimate connection with God through prayer and contemplation, a pastime he commonly spent with St. Francis. This skill that Rafino possessed is the reason for our house motto, to be gentle is to be noble. Truly a good role model for a good man of Padua. Oh, the serenity of Padua, where legends are made and stories are told. A legend himself, the Rafino House Guardian, has lived through it all. The Great Depression, the Black Plague, and of course, the changing of houses. This is no ordinary man. No, he is a god amongst men. His shiny head leads the way and is a symbol of hope for many in the Paduan community. I know him, you know him, of course, we all know him. It's the infamous Papa G. Let's go check on him now. <coughs> This year, we have the privilege of leading this great house to victory. The dash team assembled is one of the greatest ever formed. It goes as followed. Running from year five in his first dash is the elite athlete, William Maitland. He's so fast, he runs the dash twice before Nico finishes his first introduction. It's Lucas Lazzarini. In 2014, scientists found the M87 galaxy and its speed thought to be unparalleled until they watched the replay of Rafino's Matt McKinless running the dash. Running from year eight, six foot four, 210 pounds, is Colin Lazzarini. He runs to school and he's already got more speeding tickets than a red pea plater. Ethan Richards! People used to use the word fast for something that's rapid until 16 years ago. Since now, they just say, Ryan Ballantyne! Running from year 11, MB, Mac's brother, Liam McKenzie. He trains with Will Barker, so he must be alright. Running in his final dash, is Lachlan Cotter. A very big welcome wherever you're watching right around the country as we get set for the 2020 Padua Dash. My name's Drury Forbes and joining me in commentary for this one, a very special person, someone that started here at Padua for the very first Padua Dash back in 2008. It's a very big good afternoon to Lynn Welch. How are you, Lynn? Thank you very much, Drury. Yes, very good. Very excited, actually. Very excited. Fantastic to hear. As you can see, we are watching live images here of the finish line here at Padua College. And nothing short but glorious conditions here, it must be said. Clear blue skies, no breeze to speak of. 
and a very exciting day here at Padua in what is the final day of the school term and a very special one, especially for the Year 12 students. It's all happening, Lynn. And uh, what have we got to look forward to today? Well, this is one of the marquee events, if you could say, Drury of Padua College, the Padua Dash. It's uh, much loved. And uh, so it's just wonderful today to celebrate the end of the term. Oh, sorry. Uh, celebrate the end of the term, uh, particularly for our Year 12s, who uh, it's been a tough time with COVID in their final year. And for the college to organise... Uh, the Padua Dash this year, even if, you know, on film, it's just a, a, a wonderful thing for the whole community, but particularly for the 12s. Absolutely, mm. and uh, a credit to the Padua team, yes. uh, particularly uh, the rector, of course, uh, and, and his team, Peter Elmore. Yes, um, who have done a wonderful job to ensure that the 2020 Padua Dash still went ahead under the right safety uh, regulations, of course. We'll talk about that. We will see a transition zone, it's called, today, instead of passing the baton. So just one of many measures that have, uh, have been implemented for this year. Uh, but still, uh, the tradition continues. Of course, the 13th edition of the Padua Dash, uh, Lynn Welch. And, uh, well... It's been all Katani who won nine years in a row until last year we saw Angelo uh, take the title. It certainly does spice things up in terms of the storyline for today, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. It's uh, much a uh, big competition amongst the boys and the houses, of course. And I have to say that uh, Leo House has uh, come very, very close second every year to this. Pipped at the post a lot of the times too. So the mighty purple Leo House today looks to be very strong and a, a contender. Yes, and uh, although we can't see you on screen at the moment, Lynn, I can uh, to inform viewers at home, you are donning your purple uh, well and truly today. Yes, I am, Drury, very proudly. So, of course, there will be six houses in battle here for the 2020 Padua Dash. We're going to take you through the lineups now. We'll start with Quinta Vale. Of course, all these houses are actually named, are very specially named, after the early followers of St. Francis. Quinta Vale lines up. We've got a representative from each year. James Searle to kick things off from year five. Ryan out representing year six. Patterson, Fielder, Rooney, Dickey, Gugliacello, yes. and Will Franchi to take us home from year 12. And, and what a wonderful concept, uh, Lynn, having a runner from each year as we take you through all six houses. Uh, this race uh, first started in 2008. And they actually had a staff leg, didn't they? We'll get to that in a moment. Let's have a look at the Masio lineup. Wycart from year five, Childs, Turner, Simpson, Mason, Pike, Pettigrew, and Will Jones representing year 12 uh, from uh, Masio, of course. And uh, I'm sure we'll get to your Leo side shortly, Lynn. I know you're waiting. We're going to go to Katani next. Of if course. we must. <laughs> of course, Katani, uh, they've won the most dashes in Padua Dash history. Uh, Jack Dooley, uh, Phoenix Yurkovich, Zahn Spees, Daniel Kraus, Cooper Carswell, Noah Harney, Alborico Kupo, and Ned Patterson from year 12 for Katani, of course. Ned Patterson, Lynn. Uh, well, he's certainly, uh, it's fair to say, he's got running in the family. We'll talk more about him later. Uh, you're very passionate about the Leo <laughs> side. We'll take take you through the lineup. Breen, Lutchwich, Breen again. So that's Callan Breen, Harry Lutchwich, Elijah Breen, Darby Breeden, Hudson Poole, Oliver Frost, Sam DeWard, and Jack Mitchell, the Year 12 representative. We look forward to hearing more about Leo throughout the broadcast here. <laughs> yes. Of course, Lynn, I'm sure you've got plenty to say. Angelo. Of course, they're the defending champions uh, from year five, Lucas Humphreys. Year six, Thomas White. And seven, Damon Humphreys. Year eight, Isaac Boal. Year nine, Tristan French. Ten, Jack Green. Eleven, Jacob Bain. And 12, Riley Murray. And that is the Angelo lineup, of course. They'll be in yellow. And uh, they were the defending champions. And then we've got uh, Rufino, the red team. Will Maitland, Lucas Lazzarini, Matthew McKinless. Colin Lazzarini, Ethan Richards, Ryan Ballantyne, Liam McKenzie, and Lachlan Cotter. And that rounds out our teams here as part of the 2020 Padua Dash. Lynn, we mentioned Angelo defending champions. Uh, of course, we know, however, that Katani have that rich history of being successful at this event. Who do you see as the house to beat today? Who perhaps are your roughies or your smokies? 
Oh, well, I think uh, Angelo House are really in great contention for the win, but of course, Leo House, and of course, you can't go past Katani, who have got that great history. And uh, just on part of that history of Katani House, um, the leader, house leader last year, Will Barker, ran an Olympic qualifying time uh, at, at the, during the Padua Dash last year. He was also um, uh, an OP1 student, and, uh, but uh, so great history there. And Ned Patterson, the year 12 runner for Katani House this year, great, great long distance runner as well. And his older brother, Dan, when he uh, ran the Padua Dash in his final senior year, he was actually the world junior uh, champion as a triathlete. So uh, great, uh, great history here at Padua College with our runners. Yeah, absolutely, without a doubt. Uh, Ned Patterson, of course, you mentioned uh, uh, it runs in the family. Uh, he's also uh, a very keen cyclist as well. Yes. Um, Ned Patterson. And, and those names, Patterson and, and Barker, I mean, those names are synonymous with the success that Katani have had over the uh, since the introduction of the Padua Dash in 2008. Of course, they've won nine titles, and Barker and Patterson uh, have been a big part of that. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, with the uh, Katani House, um, Jason Cheer and Fletcher Finney uh, leading that house, and uh, we've got some other wonderful seniors leading the other houses who are all very, very keen for their house to win this Padua Dash. It's a great. Uh, a uh, great achievement and a, a special thing to win it. We're starting to see a little bit more purple prevalent here uh, as well, uh, out in support, of course, for Leo. Um, so just to take you through those uh, teams again, of course, there's six houses for those joining in at home. And uh, it really is fantastic to have your company wherever you're watching. We've got six houses, uh, of course, and uh, the houses are Katani, Rufino, Leo, Maceo, Quantavale, and Angelo. And we alluded to this earlier, Lynn. Um, yes. However, uh, there was a staff lick uh, in the very first Padua Dash um, where the staff actually had one of the, the legs, and I believe it might have been uh, there was no five or sixes in the race back then. There was a staff. But that didn't last very long, did it, Lynn? Why was that? <laughs> well, Drury... Um I think uh, it got a uh, never to tour again, uh, the <laughs> staff, but our, um, our current uh, Quintavale house guardian, Greg Levy, I believe uh, overtook our uh, John O'Driscoll and, uh, uh, during this race. And then I think uh, they really didn't keep up with the, the time frame, I believe. And so uh, that was the first and last year of a uh, staff leg. <laughs> yes, in, in short, uh, perhaps a couple of staff members there just perhaps costing their house. Uh, <laughs> for those uh, tuning in, uh, well, this is our very first uh, broadcast of the uh, the race. Uh, of course, uh, just recent world events, if you like, has meant that we are broadcasting this year. We hope it's not the last. So we really do uh, welcome all our viewers here today. But for those tuning in and not familiar so much with the race, Lynn, let's talk about the Padua Dash. Let's talk about the circuit because it is a very unique circuit, isn't it? where we have one representative from each year, from year five all the way up to year 12. So eight runners per house, six houses. But the circuit itself, it's a one kilometre circuit and it takes us out into this beautiful field, but also through the school and uh, onto the streets of this inner north leafy suburb of Kedron. Absolutely, Drury. They, uh, we always start at, uh, in front of normally a packed, grandstand of uh, Paduan students cheering on the teams and uh, as they head off they run around the oval, they make their way out, um, out out of the college and onto the side streets up what we call Heartbreak Hill up to the top and then they come down uh, through the entrance of the college and make their way back down uh, to where they finish right in front of the grandstand Unfortunately, due to circumstances, not a big crowd, of course, but a very, very uh, strong um, uh, support network out there with our older students, at least. Yes, absolutely. And you mentioned that uh, Padua's version of Heartbreak Hill, of yes. course, comes from the great city to surf <laughs> city to race surf, yes. uh, out of Sydney every year. 
Um, that could make or break uh, the, or, or contribute rather a long way to determining the winner today. Who can handle those tougher parts of the circuit, one would say? Well, it's it's uh, quite fun, Drury, actually, each year when, you, when the boys head off and then we always eagerly anticipate who's going to come down uh, around past the basketball courts first, that we first spot them coming back down. Um, and that's always exciting as we give them a big cheer as they come into the, the end straight. Now we Sorry. Sorry, Drew, could yes. I just mention also for Leo House, we do have a substitute for our Year t 8 runner, and it's Riley Waters, who will be running for Year 8 for Leo House today. So there you go. Breaking news here, yes. live out of Padua. Yes. Uh, there is a late scratching. <laughs> yes. Derby Breeden out, Riley Waters in. Yes. Uh, year 8, uh, running for Leo, and, of course, uh, Lynn... Uh, Always got your ear close to the ground for any team-related news coming out of the Leo camp. The mighty purple house, Drury. <laughs> no worries. So we've got uh, Riley Waters there replacing Derby Breeden. Now, we should also point out, as uh, we're not too far away from the start of the 2020 Padua Dash, but this is a highly sought-after event. And uh, just talk us through, Lynn, the qualification process uh, in terms of how each representative of each year for each house is selected. Well, they, um, Drury, they have trials. Each house has trials over a number of uh, lunch times until they... And the boys are very eager to run against each other to see who will uh, don the, the shirt of their year level um, because it's a real proud moment. Every house organises uh, and, and designs their dash shirts and each runner gets to keep their dash shirt, which is such a... A wonderful, uh, you know, uh, thing to keep as a memory, um, and really a, a, reflect, a reflection of what a great event this is, and uh, as part of Padua College. All right. Well, we're not too far away now from the start of the 2020 Padua Dash. You can see there runners getting ready. As we said, conditions glorious here at Padua College. And you can start to see here as the Year 5 runners heading to the start line. And uh, certainly plenty of uh, cheering on for each respective team here. They're at the start line for the 2020 Padua Dash. There they are. Each that, six houses represented. And they'll be nervous, Drury, but very excited. As we await the starter. The 2020 Padua Dash. Standing by. And they're off in the 2020 Padua Dash. It's been a nice clean start and going straight to the front there. Nice uh, early uh, lead there for Katani uh, straight off the bat there, Lynn. Yes, yes, going out very strong, that uh, the Katani runner there. Very strong. So they will start as part of this circuit here on the field and then they start making their way through the field. And here's a kilometre, so you, you will see these... The boys there just pace themselves somewhat, but certainly Katani leading in the early exchanges here. Followed there by the Angelo runner, who's in second place at the moment. So we've got Jack Dooley for the Katani house out front as he's left. Oh, and heading, heading out of our grounds around the industrial. Oh, there we go. Yes. So Jack Dooley... Uh, his favourite subject is English. Loves his running. He's been training since the start of the year for the dash, and uh, he certainly wanted that lead. As we have a look at, at the runners coming up now, it, it, the, the Heartbreak Hill you mentioned, Lynn. <laughs> this is our first glimpse of it. So there we go. Coming up Heartbreak Hill as we see the Angelo runner there, and there's the Katani runner. That was Jack Dooley. So just working through... Each of the Year 5 students. And uh, running for Leo is Jack Mitchell. No. 
Sorry, that's uh, in fact it is uh, Kaylin Breen yes. running for Leo. And there's Angelo leading out in front, followed by Katani. Oh, they seem to have broke. Oh, no, here we go. They're closely followed by. Oh, yes. Oh, there we are. All six very close together here, Drury. And they certainly are nice and bunched early. Yes. And we've got staff, as you can see, located along the um, course, which um, keep for safety reasons, of course, and to direct the boys, although these boys well and truly know this course. They certainly do. There's James Searle there for Quintavali, just going past shot there. But as they come through the main entrance of Padua College, having completed Heartbreak Hills, they start to make their way down through the school grounds again as they come down to the field. And there we go. That was the Masaya runner. So here we go, coming through the school. Now, it'll be interesting to see if Lucas Humphreys from Angelo is still leading. Looks like it's uh, Katani back out in front. It's Ooh. Jack Julie. So Jack Julie, who led early, is back in the lead here for Katani, of course. They've won the most dashes, Katani. And uh, well, we're just Ooh, looking closely for, followed. We're just looking for Lucas Humphreys. And here comes Julie out into the field oh, now. Oh, yes. So Jack Julie is leading for Katani. Yes. Oh. Followed by Lucas Humphreys. Yes. Who's gaining ground here oh. on Julie. Humphreys oh. coming around, Julie. And look at Humphreys oh. go. He's challenging oh. Julie and he'll finish ahead <laughs> as they get into that transition zone. And Humphreys has given Angelo, House Angelo, the lead. Heading into the year six leg. Oh, and off they go. The final two there. Rufino and Quintavale House. Yes, so all runners have completed uh, wonderful effort from the year five boys. Jack Julie did incredibly well to lead. It was uh, Lucas Humphreys winning the year five stages. Now the year sixes. And Thomas oh. White enjoys a lead for... Angelo, of course, they are the defending champions. Katani runner Phoenix Jerkovic in second place. And there's uh, Thomas White on screen there, who's a big Billy Slater fan, loves his rugby league. Oh. And also uh, prides himself, Lynn, on having a really, really good memory. Oh, very good. That's something we'll need today, that's for sure. As they come up, Heartbreak Hill, it's White leading them for Angelo here, the second of the eight runners of each house followed by Katani runner Jerkovic and then in third place we're just trying to pick up that house in third oh Drury that's the le mighty Leo house <laughs> she's all over it <laughs> so Leo have worked their way nicely into third place and that is a, uh, the year six runner rather uh, which is uh, of course uh, Harry Lutwich and there we see uh Rafino and Quintavali runners back with the leader now. Thomas White mm. from Angelo. He looks to be cruising. Look at, looking strong, isn't he? Looking very strong. And he's, uh, oh, no. Oh, look at that there. Coming behind. Oh, that Katani and the little, oh, that Leo runner there. I think he might overtake him, Drury. <laughs> A little, little Harry Lut Lutwich. Well, yes. You'd be cheering him on, surely, Lynn. <laughs> As we see there. And in the background, that's uh, Ryan Out. Uh, now, you know a little bit about Ryan Out, don't you? Actually, Ryan Out is the grandson of a uh, past rector, Mr. Bob Out, uh, here. Come um, on, uh, So he's been running uh, proudly for his dad also, Michael Out, who's on staff. We're running also for his granddad. There he is on screen there, Ryan Out. And then we've got Rafino just trailing Quintavale. And then a little further back there, the Maceo runner. Of course, very early days. And uh, running for Maceo here is uh, young Miller. Oh, and they're just about to come down now, down into the, the area there of the oval. It's Thomas White leading for Angelo, of course, taking the lead very late in the year five leg as the year six has come onto the oh, field yes. now. Uh, Thomas White for Angelo, leading with Katani, 
Jerkovic in second place, although pressure being applied here by the Leo runner in Harry Lutwich. And Angelo will take the lead heading into the year seven uh, leg as uh, they're in the transition zone. A lot of those runners. Here's Ryan out for Quintavale. And they're off some of the year sixes. We've got those, uh, sorry, year sevens rather. As the final year six runners cross the line, the uh, Rufino and also Maceo runners. So the year sixes. Maceo just heading off there now. Yes. Sorry, the year sevens. Damon Humphreys it is in the lead for, uh, for Angelo. No, that's not. And in second place is Katani, followed by Leo. So at the moment, <laughs> Angelo, Katani, and Leo, there seems to be a pack of three forming. Yeah. Easy. And I've been told it's uh, Isaac Boll who's actually running at the moment year eights. for Angelo. It's the year eights. Yeah. Year six is now. This is year, year eight. So we know that uh, know. it's Angelo in front. The nine. Eight and a half minutes gone here in the 2020 Padua Dash. Still Angelo in front. The year eights. So Isaac Bowl, it is running for Angelo. Closely followed by the Katani runner. And I've just been told that they've just slightly changed the order for the race today. The year sevens are actually going to run second last. I believe, and it's now the year eight's running. So don't adjust your PC screens. <laughs> you are seeing the year eight's running as they come through the school grounds. Glorious school grounds here at Padua too, Lynn. Oh, this is a, a beautiful sight, isn't it? And you look out over the skyline of the city of Brisbane from here, from our vantage point. Beautiful. So here's uh, Baxter Fiedler coming under the Padua oh, College... Peter! Archway. He likes his triathlons too, Baxter Fiedler. And uh, his favourite teacher is Mr. Liner. There you go. Shout out to Mr. Liner. So it is as the runners coming onto the field. Now it's still Angelo leading by about half a dozen lengths to Katani. So Isaac Bolt Wait, no. doing a wonderful job for Angelo out in front. So there we go. So just into the transition zone now. And Tristan French has taken off for Angelo, who was still in the lead. Followed by Katani. And the runner for Katani there is, uh, is Cooper Carswell. And Leo in a nice little position here, Lynn. You'd be happy to, uh, to oh, see Leo where they are. Drury just setting themselves up well. In that strong third position, keeping them in their sights. Absolutely. But, gee, that Angelo. Gee, they're looking good. The runners up the front. They've been leading each year level, haven't they? Yeah, they, they have. Well, of course, Katani took the lead early. And then Angelo, yes, yes it was their, uh, their yes. lead runner, Lucas Humphreys, had got the, the lead. There's... Tristan French on screen, followed by Katani's Cooper Carswell in the nine. And then for Leo, we've got uh, Hudson Poole, not far behind. So they're certainly within striking distance, Leo. Then we've got a little bit of a gap to the other teams. Um, and Quinta Vale currently in fourth place. Rufino in fifth. Their runner's just taken off now, Ethan Richards. And coming around into the uh, the gates or the, the transition zone uh, for uh Maceo will be James Mason, the year nine year old. So he's just taken off. So all teams now have their year nine runners on the track. Yes. Yes, Drew. We got, just, it, we got it good. We, we got there in the end, Lynn. <laughs> we did. We did. We've got there. 
So there we go as we see the runners there. Beautiful shots uh, of the school. And uh, we just alluded to it a moment ago. What, what, yes. a, what a wonderful place to come to work. Oh, Lynn. beautiful. It's a um, great spot here. We have uh, uh, different events here at times throughout the year for um, the boys enjoying the Oval. Of course, this is always packed at lunch hours. And uh, so great uh, a great oval and uh, you know, great facility for our school. Just going to point out too, Hudson Pool, our year nine runner for Leo, uh, just in view there. He's in my PC class. There you go. So mm. look, no wonder you got him into Leo. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Hudson Pool. Well, he's just. Uh, let's have a look to see. Well, it's been a wonderful effort because all of a sudden we've got a little bit of a change at the top here. So you can see here that uh, Angelo's oh. Tristan French just on screen. We've got Katani. Looks like back in the lead. Cooper Carswell as he's coming around close to that field uh, arena. So Carswell has taken the lead for Katani. Now where is Leo? Do they have second place? You just alluded to Hudson Poole. Let's see if he comes out in front oh. of Tristan French. As we anxiously wait coming around that corner. Oh, gee whiz. What a great ending. What a great finish. Carswell oh, striding here hard go. here, really putting oh, in wow. for his team, Katani. And it is, in fact, Hudson Pool emerging onto the uh, field arena in second position. So Leo into second, Katani into first. Yes, our house guardian, Chris O'Shea, they've been training for weeks. And with their leaders, Tom and Will Heald, been uh, looking after their diet and fitness over weeks and their training. It's been fabulous. Absolutely. Of course, uh, Guardian uh, Craig Nicholson would be delighted with the current result. He'd be screaming, stop the race from somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So oh. Katani now, it's the year 10s. That, that's Noah Harney out the front there, leading strongly with Katani. So Harney it is. As Lynn Welch pointed out, there he is. Noah Harney leading for the Katani side. Leo in second position at the moment and uh, we've got runners now from the year nines just completing yes and switching over to the year 10 runners that was jack green leading off for angelo there's quinta vale runners coming around it's will rooney and sam dickey trading places oh great strong ending by the rafino runner here oh Ethan, Ethan Richards. And Ethan. taking over. Taking over Ryan Ballantyne it is. Yes. And uh, so the Rufino boys there um, and Maceo coming around to complete the year nine runners. That's James Mason. Wonderful effort from James. Absolutely. He'll then pass on to Jackson Pike. So it's a year 10 runners and out in the lead is Noah Harney. There he is on screen for Katani. He's got sporting the headband as well. Just having a little look over his right shoulder there at the Leo runner in Oliver Frost. That's for uh, mental health there, uh, that those bandanas were a fundraiser uh, with the college over the last couple of years, raising awareness and funds for uh, mental health, men's mental health. So Wonderful. And uh, the, the second one of the Leo house, I have to say, is another boy in my PC class, Ollie Frost. Oh, here we go. Yes, there's uh, Sam Dickey. Yes. Sam Dickey from Quinta Valley. Oh, Live yes. shots coming up. Heartbreak Hill. Yes. And Ryan Ballantyne there on screen from Rafino. Just under 15 and a half minutes gone here in the 2020 Padua Dash. Oh, getting a bit nervous, Drew. Just getting a bit nervous. <laughs> oh. Noah. So there he is again, Noah Harney, and he just seems to be cruising at the moment, Lynn. Oh, yes, he is, isn't he? He's maybe a little bit... Oh, here he goes, coming around the bend. You know, Drury, just to see all these seniors here with their senior jerseys on, um, out here enjoying it, cheering on their house runners, it's just... Just great to see for the seniors. It's a wonderful atmosphere. They've had a tough year. Now, just on Noah Harney, I'll tell yes. you what, Ollie Frost is making some ground here. Oh, wow. Uh, for Leah Harney's putting in the big ones, though, and he's, wow. uh, he's done really well for his team to keep them in the lead. But oh. Ollie Frost for Leo has just oh. narrowed the lead somewhat. Oh. As we see Sam DeWard oh. taking off for Leo. Katani still the leaders, and Katani yes. and Leo just opening up a little bit of breathing space over the rest of the field, Lynn. Oh, yes. It, it's actually uh, the, the two, they're quite, 
quite a gap to the third. Or oh, here we go. Here we've got the Angelo runner coming through Drury, but the um, year 11. Yes, the Angelo. Alberto and, and then Sam DeWard following behind. The year 11 runners. Yes, oh. absolutely. Alberico, Cupo yes. and Sam DeWard, as you mentioned. And this is uh, just Jack Green coming across the line. He'll ch switch over with Jacob Bain. Wow. For Angelo. That was a great start by Jacob then too. Indeed it was. Indeed it was. Coming across the line now for Quintavalli, Sam Dickey. And Biagio taking off there for Quintavale. And they're yes. still in this Quintavale. Let's not oh, yes. ride off the mighty orange just yet. Oh, no, not at all. As we see our two leaders there, and it looks like Leo have taken the lead. <gasps> Sam DeWard oh. has taken the lead. Lynn oh. is jumping up and down here oh. in the commentary box. Every year. This is uh, Sam has been the runner in the Padua Dash, Sam DeWard. Wonderful, wonderful uh, cross-country runner, Sam. And he's been in the dash every year and at representing uh, Leo House. There Great he is on runner, screen. strong runner. There he is on screen. Lynn's just given her glowing endorsement of Sam DeWard's running abilities. There he is on screen. And Alberto, very close behind, though. It was funny. One of the boys was telling me the other day they were in the trials to, you know, to to be chosen and they're sprinting and Sam sort of jogging beside them which was mostly a little bit dispiriting for that <laughs> but he's such a great runner and there of course was um, Alberico Cupo there yes. as we go back to Heartbreak Hill Quintavalli Biagio. they were in fourth place yes Biagio a little bit like Madonna and sure just goes by the one name <laughs> And we're back here with our leader, Sam DeWard. And have a look at him. Oh. He doesn't even look tired. Oh. So DeWard here with that uh, running style that you can't miss. The big strides, the uh, heels going up nice and high at the back. And DeWard oh. is extending Leo's oh. lead at the moment. Will the lead be enough, Drury? Will it be enough for us? Oh, look at him sprinting at the end. Well done, Sam. I really like all the shirts of the runners too, all houses. And he's switching over with his teammate here, Lynn. Yes. Oh, yes. So, Leo out in front. We're just waiting for confirmation. Elijah Breen? Yes. Or it might be Ben DeWard. We're not too sure here, but the year sevens, Elijah it's Elijah Breen. There we go. The Out year sevens are actually now running this penultimate second last oh, leg yes. before we go to the year 12. So the year sevens are taking the imaginary baton from the year 11s at the moment. And Leo are out in front, running with Elijah Breen for Leo. Yes. Katani in second place. Oh, yes. They've got Zahn Spees out there at the moment. There's Elijah Breen on screen. And Angelo House. Yes. Passing over. Indeed, indeed. There's uh, Jacob Bain just passing over to Damon Humphreys of Year 7. Whose younger brother Lucas ran the earlier leg for Angelo. And their dad, and I think they're, as was mentioned earlier in an earlier video, they mostly run faster than their dad. But Chris <laughs> is on staff here too, so he'll be very proud. And Lucas Humphreys, look, arguably uh, yes. one of the runs of the dash so far. Oh, yes. Leading off Angelo earlier in the afternoon. There's Quintavale's Year 7 runner, Preston Patterson. As we see Rufino switch over from Ryan Ballantyne to Liam McKenzie. And for Maceo, that'll be Jack Turner taking over from Sam Pettigrew. There's our leader, Elijah Breen, representing the Leo Dash team. And we've got a very happy Lynn Welch in the commentary box, an <laughs> avid Leo supporter. Don't count our chickens yet, Drew. Don't count. Oh, look at that. Running strongly. There's a good finish there by Liam McKenzie from the year 11 for the Rufino house. Oh. And a very, very proud moment now with our year 12s all lining up. Their final ever run for the college and their, their senior year. They'll be nervous but excited and... Just very proud to be out there. 
That's right. Their, their very last day. What a way to go out oh, here at Padua College it's after all those years. Absolutely. And what a term we've had. It's, uh, it's uh, just a great way to celebrate the end of this term and uh, on a high, li- end on a high note. Live pictures now, and there's our leader once again for Leo. Leo, rather, it's Elijah Breen in cruise control out in front at the moment. Look at that, Drew. We can't even see number two runner. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Getting a little excited here is Lynn Welch, of course. Oh. She started with Padua in the year of the first ever inaugural Padua Dash back yes. in 2008. You must have started as a toddler, Oh, Lynn. thank you, Drury. Thank you. <laughs> as we see Our uh, college Green. captain and uh, Joe Downs and our vice captain, Harry Leach, are also in Leo House along with our twins, Tom and Will Heal, who are our leaders, they'll be just jumping out of their skins at the moment. And Jack Mitchell head leads us off. Fantastic. Yes, there he is. Jack Mitchell, year 12. Last day in high school for him, and he gets to lead off Leo in the 2020 Padua Dash. He'll remember this for the rest of his life. And he look at the, the fans, all these, well, his, his classmates. Great yes, to see running yes, with him. absolutely. They might give up about now, though, and Jack, yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's been training hard too, Jack, as all the runners have. Oh, and Ned, oh, look at this, Drury. Ned Patterson, just as beginning. Yes, well, Patterson, will he be able to catch Jack Mitchell? Ooh. If uh, If there's any man that yes. can... Give someone a run for their Abs- money. It's the Pattersons. And Absolutely. He's given a bit of start to Mitchell Lynn. But look at Ned Patterson. Oh. He has started oh, strongly. Very strongly. You just ca- cannot underestimate him. He's been a strong runner every year. So it's Leo leading oh. the final leg. Katani in second place. And it looks like Angelo are back in third now. As Riley we see Murray. Riley Murray yes. take off for Angelo yes. in the last leg. Yes. And here they come in. Here we've got uh, Rafino House and Quintavale House. And uh, I know that our um, Lachlan Cotter and Will Francie, the runners for each of these houses, will be just anxious to get started. Looks like Rafino oh. just moving past Quintavale as Cotter got the jump on Francie. Oh. What a great atmosphere. What a great atmosphere. There's our leader again, Jack Mitchell. Can Ned Patterson oh. running down as Mitchell has a oh. little look? He had a little look then. Ned might be on his heels. As we see, it shows Ms. off the beautiful start of the col- the front of the college too, Drury, doesn't it? Certainly does, mm. Lynn. It's uh, yes, beautiful grounds without mm. a doubt. Of course, starting all the way back in 1956, this proud college Padua, as we see for Maceo, Jack Turner. Swapping over, and here's Will Jones yes. for year 12. Yes. But here's our leader, Jack Mitchell, for Leo, as he starts to enter the main field. Now, where's Ned Patterson? That's the big oh, question here. Oh, gosh. Till they come around that corner, you just never know. Here comes Jack Mitchell for Leo. Oh, wow. And you can just see all the support. For Leo and Jack Mitchell. And this will be Leo's first ever Padua Dash win. He's yes, coming down. First ever. The final moves oh. for Jack Mitchell <laughs> and Leo. A crowned 2020 Padua Dash champions. <laughs> be a very proud uh, house guardian, Chris O'Shea there. And the runners themselves will be just so excited. But all the runners. But Leo House, what a great, what a great way. Finishing off. Oh, Jack's on the ground there. Great run. Oh, and look at Ned. Look at the ground he caught up, Drury. Look at him. So Jack Mitchell comes in for Leo to win the Padua Dash. Here's Ned Patterson. And Ned Patterson for Katani takes second position. Oh. So Katani, of course, well done to them. Of course, they won nine Padua Dashes in a row. Came second last year and second again in 2020. Here's Angelo. Will they round out the podium? We've got their runner in Riley Murray about to enter the field. Yes. Yes, he's just come around the corner there. What a strong run from these, the boys in the final leg. 
Here's Riley Murray now with 100 metres to go. A strong run from him, and uh, they led early, Angelo. Then they slipped back a little further than third. Did well to recover to finish third in the end, the Angelo side. Absolutely. In fourth place, Rafino's runner in Will Francie coming around to finish. Uh, Loch Lachlan Cotter, Rafino house leader. Sorry, there. Lachlan Connor, Cotter, Cotter, you're quite right. He's our Rafino house leader too. Indeed he is. Lachlan Cotter, that was for Rafino. And they'll get fourth place, Rafino. This is Will Franchi for Quinta Vale, who are looking like they'll take fifth position. He's a very keen modern historian student too, Drury, I might add, as our Will Franchi. What a great run from him too. It certainly was. And he'll certainly <laughs> remember this day, particularly being a modern historian and Maceo. Yes. yes. Oh. Maceo Will look. Jones. He is getting a lot of support oh, here. Have isn't a look at that the support wonderful. around him. That is that is what Padgy was about. You know, that enjoying it, supporting your mates, participation. Look at that. You'd think he would have won it, Drury. I'm getting goosebumps yes. here, Lynn. Wonderful that, scenes. And absolutely. that just typifies the spirit yes. here at Padua College yes. and their dash traditions. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Everyone. Oh, here we go. So good. Oh, that just sort of uh, shows really the, the passion that these boys have for this Padua Dash and uh, just how proud they are to, to represent their house. And, you know, it, it's, it's just wonderful, as I said earlier, that the college have taken this time to and, and the effort and to really make this event a special one today, um, you know, because we've had to lose a number of events throughout the throughout the term sadly and but just to be able to run this today is very very special yes special definitely is a word that comes to mind the 2020 Padua Dash they were determined uh, and, and a credit to all staff here at Padua they were determined to see the event go ahead absolutely absolutely and there's uh, Father John Boyd Boland sit, sitting down there our chaplain of our college Drury and a wonderful wonderful uh, supporter of the boys and the boys just love having him around the college and talking with him and uh, he was a past rector of the college as well so so the 2020 Padua Dash champions goes to Leo their first ever victory Congratulations to Leo. Congratulations to all the house teams. Yes. What a wonderful race. Wonderful scenes we saw yes. right there at the end with Will Jones coming home for Maceo. Absolutely. And certainly a day that will be enriched in the memories of the lives of these young men yes. as they enter the next phase of their lives. Oh, yes. They remember each year, uh, you know, uh, the running of the Padua Dash. It's a, very, it's a very strong event in our co-curricular program and one of the very many we have arranging a lot of different... Uh, you know, uh, sporting activities and cultural music, debating, chess. Um, and just to have this uh, event today has been great. As we stand by now for the official presentation. Good afternoon, students of Padua College and to all the families watching from home and a special good afternoon to our teachers also. Uh, it gives me great pleasure this afternoon uh, to announce the winners of our 2020 Dash. The Leo House team, captained by Jack Mitchell and their house leaders Will and Tom Heald, along with their house guardian, Mr Chris Froche. If you and your PC rooms up there right now could give the Leo House a great big round of applause and if I can ask Jack and the Leo House leaders to come out with Mr O'Shea and collect the 2020 House Dash Cup in conjunction with our Friars Cup. Here we go. Well done, gents. And if I could also invite our winning Dash team, our Leo Dash team, to come out and collect your medallions for winning the event today. Well done, boys. A great run. Fantastic effort today.
Congratulations to our winning Leo House runners today. And congratulations to all the boys who competed for their houses. Boys, it now has... Boys, it now gives me great pleasure to hand over to our rector, Mr. Peter Elmore, who's going to offer some special thanks and congratulations on behalf of the college. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Lowry, and uh, congratulations to Leo House, to Mr. O'Shea, to Tom and Will Hild, the uh, House captains. Outstanding effort today. Um, well done also to all of our runners. Fantastic effort today. We had uh, a very uh, had the third time, third best time ever today. A 2.45.09 by Sam DeWard. So great conditions and Sam's done an outstanding job in running the third best time ever. Can I say thank you to all of our House Guardians. The videos, the introduction to the, the dash was outstanding and I thank all of the uh, House Guardians and their leaders for the time that went into that. Can I also thank um, the sports staff, Mr Parle and Mr Out, for the energy and the efforts that have gone into putting on to today's race. Trying conditions, we know that as uh, our, our uh, Leo House team get their uh, medals and their certificates from Father John. An outstanding effort given the conditions that we have. Can I also thank our broadcast partners. The, uh, we went out from Padua, we went out to uh, the wide world and uh, we thank uh, our broadcast partners Red Corner and Brian Kerwin for their efforts. And a special thanks to our commentators um, and special thanks to Miss Welsh for stepping up into that role today. I'd also like to acknowledge the work of our staff here, our IT staff, Mr Yates and our um, Mr Jackson who did our AV and all of the students who supported that. Folks, uh, days like today are outstanding. They're a nice way for us to finish the term and even though we couldn't do it here in person, we hope that at home and in the classrooms that the very, very special message of the Dash of bringing people together for a race, you know, that, that great spirit that comes from watching competitors run and do their very best. We hope that in some small way, bringing that to you live, um, using Red Corner, has in some ways made today special. So a big thank you. I say thank you to all of the staff as we uh, say goodbye for this term. Thank you for their efforts this term and a special thank you to all of the boys as well as we say a, a finish to the term. So. In finishing up, I'd like to have Father John say a few words just to finish the term for us. Father? Thank you, Mr Elmore. Uh, gentlemen, it's been a challenging term, hasn't it, for all of us. So you're well deserving of a good holiday. Could I just ask you, uh, during this holiday period, to stay COVID safe? We still have rules and regulations to keep us all uh, healthy, all ready for a very exciting semester coming up. So enjoy your holidays uh, and remember that your mum and dad too have had a challenging time as well. So be kind to them, be good to them and help them out as much as you possibly can. So enjoy your holidays gentlemen and I look forward to seeing you all in a couple of weeks time. Thank you Father and let's remember the message of the St Anthony Liturgy. Go out and be kind to people. In times of challenge it calls us to be particularly human. So I also say to you have a safe and a relaxing holiday and enjoy that time until we see you all again here at the start of next term. And I hand over to Mr Lowry for directions from here. Thank you gents. Uh, PC teachers, if you're hearing this right now, it's, that's the end of our coverage. PC teachers, if you're hearing this right now, then we're free to move off to our extended second break uh, following the timetable, finishing with our extended PC in the afternoon. Thank you again to everyone involved today and have a great holiday.